What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another Hype Disney video and obviously I'm not at the parks. I'm actually in Las Vegas right now for Thanksgiving week and the weekend. So I thought I would come here, not necessarily film anything Disney related, but talk about everything that's coming to the park, specifically Disneyland next year and the year after 2022 and 2023. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing or first two things that are coming back to Disneyland and California Adventure, as you guys already know or may not know, Fantasmic and World of Color haven't been at the park since the reopening. Now it is coming back to the parks in full swing next year, 2022. DCA won't have a drained out lake and Fantasmic or Tom Sawyer's Island. New Orleans Square is gonna be filled with people at nighttime. The parks are getting back to normal. So I'm actually excited for Fantasmic to come back only because you can't go to Disneyland, especially if you stay from some decent time in the afternoon or in the morning till close. You can't go to New Orleans Square, ride Haunted Mansion, ride Pirates without walking out, seeing the big crowd, waiting for Fantasmic to happen. And with the opening of Pelican's Landing, which technically is seating area for Fantasmic, it's gonna be amazing. And I hope, I hope that they drop new Fantasmic merch for 2021, or maybe they might even update it when Fantasmic returns. So Fantasmic, World of Color coming back to Disneyland and DCA, it's gonna be very exciting. Up next, they gave us an update on what they're gonna be doing to Toontown. So as we're all aware, there's a big portion of Toontown that's closed off because Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is coming to the parks in 2023. However, what we didn't know at the time was that they were actually gonna close down. So what we actually didn't know at the time was that they were gonna close down all of Toontown starting March next year and opening it up 2023. It's gonna be a whole new different Toontown than what we're used to seeing. However, a majority of it will be the same. Uh, I, I know for a fact that, uh, you know, Mickey, Donald, Minnie's house is gonna still be there. Chippendale's house is gonna be there. Goofy's house is gonna be there. Now, as far as attractions go, Gadget's Go Coaster, I think is gonna be there. And based on the image that you're seeing here, um, I'm pretty sure Roger Rabbit is gonna stay, but there's no clear indication as to if it is staying or if it's not. Again, I might be wrong about that, but I'm 100% sure it's staying. And speaking of Roger Rabbit, um, if you guys haven't rode that attraction recently, they're actually changing the storyline of that ride where before, uh, it used to be about Roger Rabbit saving Jessica Rabbit, but now I think they're trying to make it more about Jessica Rabbit just to, you know, change some things that might be insensitive in today's culture. So yeah, Toontown is going to be closing starting March 2022. So if you guys are ever in Toontown, take a good look at it right now because it might be different the next time you go into Toontown next year or in 2023. So that's going to be exciting. And of course, with the new e-ticket being Runaway Railway, I'm so excited for that. Um, I've only seen videos about it on YouTube uh, for the Runaway Railway in Disney World. And we'll see, maybe it might be an exact copy of what's over at uh, Hollywood Studios, or it might be something completely different, maybe uniquely unique uh, to Disneyland. So Toontown, closing March 2022. If you guys have reservations for December through February, get them in, go to Toontown. Get your fit pics, get your pics for your Disney pages. And yeah, let me know in the comments if you guys are excited about what the new Toontown is going to look like. And let me know as well, um, are you guys excited for the change? Are you guys going to be sad that some parts of Toontown is going to be changing? Let me know. Let's move on. Now, outside of the parks, they're going to be doing some things around the area. We're going to start off with the new building at the Disneyland Hotel. Imagineers are working hard at infusing the new resort property with elements that bring the Disney storytelling to life. They're all inspired by uh, original stories by Walt Disney as well as anime, Disney Animation Studio Classic. There's gonna be a new pool, a new recreation area, and different type of rooms that you guys can stay at. Me personally, I don't really have to stay on property, but this is gonna be a nice change because Disneyland Hotel, I mean, a lot of people do like to stay there, and especially during COVID. Majority of the things aren't open. I still, I still think they're not open, or they might be open, as not as much as a, Paradise Garden or Paradise Pier Hotel where nothing is open, but hopefully this brings a new breath of fresh air for the Disneyland Hotel specifically. And of course it's gonna bring more guests from out of state or even locally. They just want to experience 
the Disneyland Hotel stay, experience the magic for a couple of days. But speaking of that area of the Disneyland Hotel, let's talk about Downtown Disney. So if you're like me who recently started taking the bridge walk to skip the tram walk because I still think the tram walk is a very, very boring way to get to the park. You'll know that once you enter through the Downtown Disney entrance from that side, you're gonna see AMC, which is still closed. You're gonna see Earl's Sandwich, Starbucks, the uh, former space of ESPN Red Zone. They're gonna redo that entire space. So everything from the Lego store, if you're facing you know, the Disneyland Hotel, from the Disney store going towards the entrance of Downtown Disney, they're gonna retheme and redesign the entire space. Now, originally we all thought, or most people thought that they were just gonna tear down the building specifically where AMC used to sit because we all know that it's been vacant for quite some time now, but they decided to retheme the entire section or the entire area. So that means Starbucks is gonna be closing, Earl's Sandwich is gonna be closing. And that's a big thing because a lot of people enjoy Earl's Sandwich, including myself. And I've heard some people say that Chicken Guy, which is only exclusive to Walt Disney World, might be coming to Downtown Disney, but here's another thing. If you look at the schematic or the concept art here on the screen, or if you look at it to give yourself a better look at it, you're gonna notice that it has a very familiar overall theme to it. It has very retro-esque 1970s Tomorrowland vibes to it. And if you really think about it, in this same area is the downtown Disney monorail station and what's the only stop right now that the monorail has other than downtown Disney station? Tomorrowland. So I've heard some things online where this might be the start of redesigning or finally bringing back a breath of life for Tomorrowland because we all know that it's lacking in so many aspects. So with this whole overall, you know, retro vibe 1970s Tomorrowland-esque style, it might be connecting to each other. So making it seamless if you enter through downtown Disney, you wanna take the monorail straight into Tomorrowland. How cool would it be if you got on the monorail with the overall theme when everything is all completed, get on the monorail, exit off Tomorrowland, and have that same theme continue on into your experience, making that seamless, making that more magical. Because right now, the overall theme of downtown Disney is kind of confusing. You know, they've done a lot of repainting and a lot of theme changes for the area, but let me know in the comments how cool would that be. And the biggest thing coming to Disneyland next year is something that me personally, I am very geeked out about as a computer science major, but have been waiting for for almost a decade, I guess you could say. So back in 2013, Walt Disney World released the Magic Band. And at first it was kind of buggy, you know, it was 50-50 in terms of guest, guest satisfaction. But now in 2022, almost 10 years after the first release of Magic Bands, we're finally gonna be getting Magic Band Plus, which is the next generation of Magic Bands. I mean, guys, a lot of you who are watching this video right now are Disneyland natives, Disneyland locals, Disneyland fans, right? And the fact that you know, especially on my Instagram page, I have a lot of people who I follow who are from Walt Disney World, and I always, here, here, here and then I always see them, you know, buy new Magic Bands, flex the Magic Band. Now we get to do that here at Disneyland. I am so excited for this, guys. Uh, you don't understand, especially with the technology behind how Magic Bands work. I'm not really gonna get into that as much. Magic Bands coming to Disneyland in 2022. To me, that's the biggest takeaway in terms of Disneyland specific updates or new releases coming next year or in the following years. You know, I can't, once this release comes out, best believe I'm gonna be buying like three or four magic bands just to spice it up. I know I don't, definitely don't want like a basic band, but yeah, magic bands coming to Disneyland. I mean, what more can I say? I mean, come on. It is gonna get some getting used to though, because normally, We'd have to take our phone, show it to the uh, turnstile, cast member, scan it, get in. But now we just get a, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you gotta get used to doing this, especially when it comes to paying for things that let's say the Emporium or Star Trader. All you gotta do now is, you know, it's like tapping your Apple Watch or tapping your phone to pay. You can just do that and you're all good. And of course with the advent and the future to come release of Genie Plus, we don't necessarily need to have our phones as out as much, only need to use it for wait times. But now also, 
with the advent of Genie Plus, all you got to do is just tap it on the reader. Uh, it'll know that you reserved a lightning lane for a specific ride. And you guys will be good to go. And since this is going to be the next generation of Magic Band, there's going to be some cool features implemented into it, such as gesture recognition, which I don't really know what it's going to be used for specifically. But if they use it in Galaxy's Edge to, you know, make you feel like you have the force in yourself, and they actually make something move, make something float, make something come together, that's gonna be insane. But yeah, and also you can get designs on the face of the Magic Band as well, so it's not just a Mickey Mouse silhouette anymore. You can get Sleeping Beauty's Castle, you can get the Partner Statue. I'm not too sure if you can get like personalized pictures, but I know you can get personalized text on that. And of course as well, you can buy more Magic Bands with different styles, but yeah. Magic Band Plus, Magic Band, Disneyland, 2022. Let's go. And with all of that being said, that's gonna be the end of the video. Let me know what you guys think about everything coming to Disneyland in the upcoming years or in the upcoming months. Let me know which of the new things that you thought was the most irrelevant or it doesn't really matter too much to you. You know, let me know about your individual opinions about each of the things that we cover here today. And last but not least, make sure you guys subscribe, like the video. Let me know in the comments if I should do more sit down videos like this. And thank you for watching.